we will walk with God. My brothers, we will walk with God. You all come into my brothers. Do it again. We will walk with God. My brothers, we will walk with God. Then I lead. We will walk with God. My sisters, we will walk with God. Then we all sing all the rest. Okay, hopefully that helps. Um, now we've got a new song. This is the new songbook called God Welcomes All. It's a supplement to CH4, and it's great. There are lots of good songs in it. So for this morning, Anne has chosen a song out of this book called Oh How Good It Is. So we're going to have a wee bash at that. Um, this song is by Keith and Kristen Getty and Stuart Townend, who are well-known songwriters. Uh, I think Stuart Townend is from Northern Ireland and the Gettys, I think they're American, but I might be wrong. So. Here's how the first bit goes. Oh, how good it is when the family of God dwells together in spirit, in faith and unity, where the bonds of peace, of acceptance and love are the fruit of his presence here among us. So we'll just stick with that with the verse just now. Thanks. First bit. Oh, how good it is when the family of God dwells together in spirit, in faith and unity. Let's do that bit again, please. You're, you're doing well. Oh, how good it is when the family of God dwells together in spirit, in faith and unity. The next bit's the same as the first bit. We're the bonds of peace and acceptance and love are the fruits of his presence here among us. Let's do the verse again. Oh, how good it is when the family of God dwells together in spirit in faith and unity where the bonds of peace of acceptance and love are the fruit of his presence here among us now the chorus don't worry too much about the chorus the choir will keep you right they can sing it quite well and at the end of the chorus it goes back to the main tune da, 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 da. can we have the words for the chorus please da, da. So with, it's actually so. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord, and with one heart we'll live at his work, till the whole earth sees the Redeemer has come, for he dwells in the presence of his people. So you see how it goes back to the main tune at the at the last bit. Um, is it, I'll play it over on the piano just once before the service starts as the choir and ministers come in. So is it okay to leave the words up while I play the piano or do you need to go back to the intimations? Do whatever you think. <laughs> but I'll, I'll give you a quick blast of it on the piano. It's got a nice flowing rhythm, a 6-8 rhythm, quite like Lord, you have come to the seashore. Thank you very much for your patience.
Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to worship with you all today. Uh, we're glad you're here, whether you're joining us in person or online. It's good to have you as part of our community this morning. We'll begin our worship as we always do with our gathering song. It's welcome, everybody. So I invite you as you're able to stand and all please uh, join as we sing and do the hand motions together. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. to share this morning. The first being that hopefully the weather next Sunday morning is a little brighter and drier than today. We're scheduled to be outdoors in the park uh, for an open air service. Um, the decision about where worship will be will happen later in the week, so uh, please keep an eye on your emails. Um, but hopefully we'll be outside in the park at 1030. Um, the band will be there, which is always wonderful. Um, and if the rain or weather uh, does not allow us to be outside, we'll be here in the church at 1030. And that will be a joint service with St. Ninian's. Uh, the McVicker Fletcher Bursaries, the deadline uh, for that is coming up later this month. It's for young people um, going on to further education or opportunities. So if you know anyone who would be a candidate for that, please let them know that they can apply from this or St. Ninian's congregation. Um, and you can speak to David or Jim for more information about that. The application, uh, you can see, is the 15th of August. Uh, summer coffee mornings are continuing on Tuesday mornings from 10 until, until 12 noon uh, every Tuesday for the rest of this month. Um, so please come along. You're sure to enjoy good company and a good cake, I'm sure. Uh, £2.50. Um, so please invite friends and neighbors to join on Tuesday mornings. An opportunity for singing, a vocal workshop held by the Greenock Philharmonic Choir. They're having an open training day on Saturday, the 24th of August. That'll be here in the church from 10.30 till 5 p.m. Cost is 15 pounds. Music is provided, plus tea, coffee, and home baking. So this is open to everyone, uh, singers at any level. So um, if you're interested in that, please come along. Um, I think there might be a flyer as well, or there's information there. You can contact Lynn, or there's the email address and phone number. So hope those of you who are interested will come along to that. The annual golf event is also happening that weekend. That will be on Sunday, the 25th of August. There are tee offs between 12.30 and 2.30, and then there will be a two-course meal afterwards. So anyone who's interested in joining in the golfing or the eating, uh, you can contact <laughs> Alan. All are welcome to join in that. Um, we'll be celebrating the Sacrament of Communion on Sunday, the 1st of September, so elders, please pick up your district books um, from the front pew in the sanctuary. The Dementia Cafe has returned. I believe they had their first meeting this past Friday, so that's Friday afternoons from 2 until 3.30 in the Isla Hall. All are welcome there. I see there's a schedule in the hall, um, so you can see what opportunities are coming up, but all will be made most welcome there. Um, if anyone is interested in the Life and Work magazine of the Church of Scotland, you can get it in digital or print format. It's got lots of information and articles um, and other good stuff. So if you would like to find out more, uh, you can speak with Billy or go, go to the website to find out more. Uh, church magazines are now available to pick up. 
Um, so distributors can do that from the Cumbrae Hall. And some good news to share. We'll maybe get to that in a moment. I believe David has another intimation to share. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. How are we doing? I speak as a more mature person these days. <laughs> and can I just point out, I still don't have my bus pass. Um, just to say a thank you to all of you who came along on Sunday and those of you who have sent cards and messages on the occasion of my 60th. It has been very much appreciated. And the amount of cards was ridiculous. Um, but thank you so much for all the kind messages for the, the presents that were given as well. Um, people who know me so well, book tokens are always brilliant. So too are golf balls with my own face on it, <laughs> which is brilliant. I'm not going to use them, sorry. <laughs> But um, just thank you so much for all the presents and, and messages and, and kind wishes. We did um, suggest that if people wanted to come along, if they wanted to make, rather than having presents, but to, to put something in to, to, um, for the Argyle Hospice. Today, we've got over £1,100, which really is quite something. So thank you so much for your support, your kindness, and your best wishes. Um, it made a, an old man very happy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we also then went to Bruges for a few days to follow Kilmarnock. The experience of Bruges made an old man happy. The result didn't. Um, however, it was, uh, they're used to football teams going over there. Um, we were picked up by bus and bus to the ground with full police escort. And in fact, Andrew and I, my nephew and I, were one of the last buses to leave, and we were followed by the water cannon and four police vans. <laughs> I assume the water cannon was just to cool us down because it was a warm day, but uh, it was, it's been a great experience. So thank you so much for last week. All of you came. Um, I'm so glad we did it last Sunday, not this Sunday, given the weather, um, but it really was fantastic. Thank you so much, and thank you for your generosity. I'll let you know the final total that we send to the hospice in due course, but at the minute it's well over 1,100 and still climbing. So thank you so much for your generosity. I do appreciate it. Thank you. And there will be more good news to celebrate later in the service, but we'll say more about that later. Um, uh, one intimation that I neglected is that the social committee is planning a day trip to the Palace of Hollywood House in Edinburgh on Saturday, the 7th of September, 2024. So anyone who's interested in joining in that should speak to Jean Jennings, Jean Gilmore, Shona Hunter or Joan McRae for further information. So that's sure to be a fun outing. And then continuing with good news, the gentleman hosted the coffee morning this week. <laughs> what a wonderful photo. Uh, thanks to them. I'm sure that was much enjoyed and appreciated by all. Is there other good news to share this morning? As always, it's good to be together. So in future, um, you can leave a note for David or I when you arrive on Sunday morning so that we can share that good news together and intimations send along during the week so that they can be sent out in the weekly email. So I think that's our intimations and good news for just now. So we'll continue in our worship. Uh, our first hymn is a new one. I think Callum has uh, introduced it already, but as you're able, we'll join and sing together um, a new hymn, Oh How Good It Is. The choir and I are going to sing verse 1 in the chorus, and then we'll all stand to sing the whole song, including going back to verse 1. Oh, how good it is when the family of God dwells together in spirit, in faith and unity, where the bonds of peace, of acceptance and love are the fruit of His presence here among us. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord, His work till the whole earth sees 
the Redeemer has come, for he dwells in the presence of his people. Oh, how good it is when the family of God dwells together in spirit, in faith and unity, where the bonds of peace are acceptance and love, are the fruit of His Spirit here among us. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord, and with one heart we'll live at his word till the whole earth sees the redeemer has come for he dwells in the presence of his people oh how good it is on this journey we share to rejoice with the happy and weep with those who mourn for the weak find strength the afflicted and grace when we offer the blessing of belonging so with one voice we'll sing to the lord and with one heart we'll live at his word Till the whole earth sees the Redeemer has come, for he dwells in the presence of his people. Oh, how good it is to embrace his command, to refer one another, forgive as he forgives. When we live as one, we all share in the love of the Son with the Father and the Spirit. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord, and with one heart we'll live at His word till the whole earth sees the Redeemer has come. For he dwells in the presence of his people. I wasn't sure if we would have children today because it's summer holidays, but I'm so glad to see all of you. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. It's great to see you all. So I, oh, I forgot one thing. I remembered my backpack, but I forgot my notes. So today, one of the things we're talking about in church is going on long journeys. Have any of you ever been on a long journey? Because where did you just go? <laughs> to Turkey. Where did you go? You went to Holland, and you were just on, you went on a, yeah? Oh, so we've been, been on lots of journeys. Sometimes we go on planes, sometimes cars, sometimes ferries. You took the ferry to Holland, right? Yeah. And sometimes, have any of you ever been hill walking or climbed a mountain? Yeah. Have you, Rosie? Yeah? No? Earlier this summer, I climbed Ben Lomond. That was a big climb. That took a long time. So I always take a backpack when I go on an adventure. Do you ever take a backpack with supplies? Yeah? What do you normally take? I was thinking we could see what I usually have in mind. Will you come help me look? I can't remember what I put in here. What do you normally take with you on an adventure? A teddy? I forgot my teddy. I, did, I had my water bottle. You take something to drink, some juice. Um, you gotta take a hat. Maybe not today. We maybe wouldn't need a hat today, but sometimes it's sunny. We probably don't need our sunglasses today either, right? No, no. Maybe the umbrella. That would be more helpful today. Um, what else do I normally take? Oh, I always take a snack. Do you take snacks with you? If it's a long journey. See, I take snacks all the time, even if it's just a short journey. I had a snack when I was driving to church this morning. <laughs> After breakfast, I always take a snack. So when we go on journeys, when we go on adventures, it's good to be prepared, right? But we can't take everything that we need in our backpacks. Because what else do we need when we go on a journey? The 
it's nice to go on journeys with other people, right? With friends and family. They wouldn't fit in our backpack. No. Sometimes we need determination. You know what determination means? It's kind of like a real attitude of going to achieve something and of sticking with something, even if it's hard. And that doesn't fit in the backpack. Sometimes you might need courage. What does it mean? What does courage mean? church is usually God. <laughs> you know it, right? So no matter where we go, no matter what we do, God is always with us. We are never, ever, ever alone on our journey. And that can help us be brave. That can help us be kind. It's something very exciting. I agree, Rosie. That's great. So as you think about the journeys that you go on, as you think about all the life you have to live, you can remember that God is always with you. So thanks for chatting with me. Thanks for checking out my backpack with me. I was thinking we could say a prayer together. How's that sound? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll say a few words, and then you can repeat after me, okay? Mm-hmm. All right. So, dear God, dear thank you for the journeys of our lives. Thank you for going with us every step of the way so that we are never alone. I believe we'll move on to our first reading, which comes from the Old Testament. We're in 1 Kings, and Ken will read for us now from chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. Elijah flees to Horeb. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Amen. Now let us join our hearts in prayer and we'll say the Lord's Prayer together at the end. Let us pray. Holy God, we gather here in this place in person and in spirit, thanks to the gifts of technology, And we worship you together, offering our prayers of thanksgiving, of adoration, of confession, and of intercession. For we do need to be reminded to be thankful for all that we have and mindful of the needs of others. May our prayers for our neighbors, ourselves, and our world be turned into actions. And as we confess of the ways we have turned away from you, trusting in your abundant mercy, We ask that you would guide us back to your path, O Lord. Look on us, gracious God, with the same compassionate understanding which you have looked upon your people for generations. Show us what we need and enable us to be sharers of your love for one another. Let this prayer today and the offerings that go with it be an all-encompassing grace for the many everyday blessings that we enjoy. Let this time of worship renew us that we would be supported, 
encouraged and sustained for the journey of the week ahead. We pray all of these things in the name of Christ who taught us how to pray, saying together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We'll turn now to our second reading, which is in the New Testament. We're in Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 1 through 9. Thanks again to Ken for reading. Jesus feeds the 4,000. During those days, a large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have had nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, But where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people, and they did so. They had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to distribute them. The people ate and were satisfied. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 men were present. Thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word, and to his name be all the praise and the glory. Our next hymn is number 655, For Your Generous Providing. Again, please rise as you're able.
internet in recent years, there's a kind of graphic that says something along the lines of, maybe everything isn't terrible. Maybe you just need a nap and a snack. <laughs> I just really, you could stitch that on a pillow. Because as someone who enjoys a good nap, and who has been known to get hangry from time to time, that is, I get angry because I'm hungry, I can attest to the truth of this statement. As I said to the children, I generally keep a snack in my handbag to avoid such situations. Well, I can get cranky if I don't have a big enough breakfast, I of course recognize how fortunate I am that I have never wondered where my next meal is coming from. I've never gone to bed hungry. I've never actually known real physical hunger. And food is one of our most basic needs. We cannot survive without it. And yet today, in the year of our Lord, 2024, when we produce more food than ever before, there are places in the world experiencing famine. And there's no explanation or excuse for that other than the injustice that is all too prevalent in our society, the conflicts that rage in various parts of the world, and the effects of our changing climate that are wreaking havoc on the land and weather and crops we depend on for our food. Now this is not the world God desires. No part of God's plan involves people going hungry. When we pray for our daily bread and for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven, we do so because we know that to be true. And because we know the abundant goodness that God does envision for every single one of God's children. Food and clean water and safe shelter and rest and relationships. God gets that we have physical and spiritual needs and seeks to provide all of those things for all of us. And I think of food as being both physical and spiritual. Yes, we have to eat to survive, but food also brings people together and builds community. A good meal with good people can fill our hearts as much as our stomachs. My favorite holiday is Thanksgiving because it's just entirely about giving thanks while eating delicious food with people you love. I look forward to it every year because it's my favorite food, but also because it's a joyous occasion. It reminds me of the Sacrament of Communion, a giant table where there is room for every, everyone and always room for one more. When we celebrate communion in the simple act of giving thanks for the gifts of God and of sharing bread and wine as a reminder of God's grace, we are united with all who do the same, and we're inspired and equipped to go out and live as Jesus' followers in the world. And that's so fitting because food was such a big part of Jesus' ministry, whether he was eating with outcasts and sinners as he traveled around or sharing a last meal with his friends before he died for them. And food in the Bible always seems to be about so much more than its nutritional value because it's so much more significant than that. <coughs> food is about provision for the journey ahead. And so we find Elijah on a journey of sorts in our first reading. The prophet had had an eventful start to his ministry. He performed a miracle for a widow who had run out of food. He revived another widow's son. And then he triumphed over the priests of Baal in a dramatic showdown on mountaintop. And it was this last event that really enraged Jezebel, who was married to Ahab, the king of Israel. She threatened to kill Elijah, and so he fled beyond the territory of her reach, leaving his servant in Beersheba and going even farther on his own, traveling a whole day into the wilderness of the desert. And it was there that he felt all hope was lost. Whether it was fear or a sense of failure or isolation, Elijah felt completely despondent. He was in the depths of despair, so much so that he wanted God to take his life. And some of us who have experience with depression or who have walked with someone who has know what a dark and lonely place that is to be. But even and especially in those darkest moments, we are never 
alone. God showed up to Elijah, who had fallen asleep under a broom tree, in the form of an angel who woke Elijah up and told him to eat. The angel provided a piece of cake and a jar of water, and Elijah did as he was told, but then he went back to sleep. So the angel came back again and told Elijah to get up and eat, and this time he added, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. So Elijah got up and ate and drank, and then the text tells us that he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mount of God. Clearly, Elijah needed both a nap and a snack. That's always a good place to start. But he needed more than that, too. He needed reassurance that he wasn't alone. He needed a reminder that God was with him. He needed to know God's presence in his life so that he could go ahead with the task that he had been called to, which was to be one of God's prophets, to lead the people of Israel in righteousness and justice. God knew what Elijah needed, knew what he longed for physically and spiritually, even better maybe than Elijah knew what he desired for himself. And God sought to provide those things. Because that's how God loves us and how Jesus showed us to love one another. In our second reading from Mark's gospel, it's one telling of Jesus feeding the multitude. This time it's only a crowd of 4,000 people who had gathered to listen to Jesus teach. But Jesus looked at that crowd and knew they were hungry and said to his disciples, I have compassion for them because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from a great distance. Now, even though this is not long after Jesus fed 5,000 people, just in chapter 6, of Mark's gospel, the disciples responded to their friend and teacher with confusion and disbelief. How can one feed these people with bread here in the desert, they asked. They had already forgotten what Jesus could do. They already needed to be reminded again of what and how Jesus could provide. So upon learning that the disciples had seven loaves of bread, Jesus ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground and in a ma manner that's familiar to us who celebrate communion, he took the bread, he gave thanks, and broke the loaves. He gave them to the disciples to distribute along with some fish, and the whole crowd ate and were filled. Not only that, there were also seven baskets full of leftovers. Jesus did not just provide enough. He provided more than enough. We can easily get caught up in the mechanics of such a miracle, wondering what really happened and how, but I think that distracts us from the bigger picture, which is that Jesus saw a crowd of people and saw their need, and moved by compassion, he met that need. Food, yes, but we don't know exactly why all those people had sought Jesus out. What did they need that compelled them to follow him out to the desert. But in feeding the people and in ministering to them and teaching them, Jesus sought to meet those needs too. And that's the example that we're supposed to follow. God cares for us deeply and provides for us abundantly. God is with us always and in all ways, never leaving us alone on our journeys thankfully never leaving us only to our own devices. Whether it's physical sustenance or spiritual restoration, God's desire is for all people to have enough. Enough food and water and rest. Enough safe places to live and thrive. Enough assurance and love and courage to be who God created and calls us to be. In ways we might not expect or understand or recognize, God finds ways to provide through the kindness and generosity of friends and strangers, through the justice and peace sought by us and by neighbors near and far, through the goodness that we find all around us. And so as we're on our journeys, we must care for those we meet along the way too. We must find ways to bring provision of God's goodness to those we encounter. 
Maybe that's in the form of a meal for a neighbor who, who could use a tangible reminder that someone cares for them. Maybe that's a phone call to a friend you haven't spoken to in a while, or time with a family member who's been dealing with a lot. Perhaps you can donate some of your time or money to an organization that's doing good work in our community or in the wider world. Or you can be sure to lead with kindness and compassion as you go about your days, remembering that it is up to us to live out the abundant provision of God's goodness for all people and to remind each and every person that they are not alone. Our next hymn is number 524, Jesus Christ, Our Living Lord. I think, again, we'll have the choir sing the first verse, and then you're all invited to join in as we continue. So please rise as you're able. It is on that journey that we continue in our service this morning and in our prayers. As we share this morning, as sitting here with this other lectern in front of me, and there's an inscription in the front of it which says, To the glory of God, to the glory of God, along with flower vases, the gift of the primary in nineteen twenty four. And it reminds you of the continuation of of the journey of life and faith that we are representatives of today, being sustained through that journey of life and faith here in Old Guru Ashton and the last 70 years of St. Ninian's as well, in that journey of expression and sharing and the gift of love that we seek to share to the people that we live and work with and share with. And so we bring them to God in our prayers of intercession. Whether they know they are being remembered or not, we bring them to God and we remember them together. Let us pray. As we pray, we remember the family of um, 
My mind's just gone blank. Excuse me, I do apologize. Um, Jim? Yes, and? Mental block, I do apologize. We're going to remember the family of Bun Bunty Brands. One of the members of Okura National has passed away this week. We remember Bunty's family and our thoughts and prayers today. The funeral details will come later on uh, in the week, but um, just to remind you and to remember Douglas and all the family and our thoughts and prayers. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, so we gather on the journey. We gather as a family together. While we don't break bread here today, what we do share is the gift of your grace. We share in the wonder of fellowship and the fact of being together. We thank you for the journey of our own lives, the stories that make us, mold us and shape us into who we are and what we are. We thank you for the gifts of those who have loved us and shared that journey with us. And we thank you for the gift of being here today. So Lord, as we come before you as a congregation of your people, we thank you that you feed us today with the gifts of grace and love and hope through the words of the messages of the scriptures that we have read, through the words that Anne has imparted to us. So we are reminded of your call to us and the fact that you sustain us in all that we seek to be and all that we seek to do. Guide us in your way of truth. Guide us to do what you ask of us and to be the conduits through which your love can flow. Holy and loving God, through Jesus Christ, you gave us the way of, of grace, the way of truth. In Jesus Christ, we offer our prayers today. We pray for the world that is broken and needs to, be, know, needs to know that sense of love and belonging. So much we hear brings tears to our eyes and the reality of our hearts breaking. The reality of violence, of oppression, the reality of war and threat of war, the, the reality of hate expressed so vehemently by so many. We pray for peace in all areas of conflict, especially in the horror of Ukraine, the reality of Israel and Lebanon and Palestine. We pray for peace in areas of Africa, wherever there is tension, Lord, as people fight for rights and for their voices to be heard. We think of the situation in Venezuela. We pray for peace, Lord. We pray that you may sustain your people. You may feed them with hope, not despair. You may deliver them into your love. We pray for those who struggle in the reality of life, facing poverty, facing famine, facing where they don't know where their next meal is coming from, and we commend them to you, Lord. We pray for our own community. We pray that it may be inclusive and welcoming. We hear the voices of hate being raised against immigrants, against new people coming to our country. And we pray for unity. We pray for a sense of belonging. We pray, O oh Lord, that your will may be in these situations. Your love may be known and love may be shown to overcome the voices of hate and violence. We pray for our communities here that we live and work in and share in. We pray for our neighbors and friends. We pray for the people we meet in the bowling club, the golf club, or every other social place we meet. We remember those who are in need in our own community, those in hospital or at home struggling with illness, those who have lost a loved one and who struggle with that reality of loss and the depth of despair. We remember the Brands family today as they mourn Bunty's passing. We pray for her and for her family and we commend them to you in love. And before you, Lord, we bring our families and friends. Before you, we bring the situations that we know of and others that we've never met but we've heard of. We bring to you those who we know to be in need of your presence. Lord, in the silence, hear our prayers.
Father, as we continue in the journey of the summer months, we know the weather's not what we'd hope for, especially for our children. We pray for all the children during their holiday time from school and nursery. <clears throat> Those who teach them and will be there for them in the new session to start soon. But we pray for all families and, and all that's going on in the summer holidays that all may be blessed and know your love. We thank you that as a congregation, we can share that love by saying to others and sharing with others the good news that we know through your son, Jesus Christ, and that we know and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Father, hear these our prayers, for we offer them in, in Jesus' name and through the power of your spirit to you, one God, world without end. Amen. Journeys of life. I believe someone had a big step in that journey recently. Yeah. So I'll invite uh, Jim and Jeanette to come forward now. This is ominous. <laughs> ominous. amazing what you find out this moves look oh. <laughs> I thought I'd broken it 100 years and I break it it's a big old nut. <clears throat> David if you could come forward as well please this will not come as a total surprise to you <clears throat> Since Shona brought it right. here this morning, <laughs> we bought it. one day on the golf course, where else? <laughs> we were walking round while we were playing, but we were also <coughs> walking round and talking. And David had just uh, had a presbytery service the day before, and he said, "You know, I'm really." in awe of lots of my colleagues' teaching scarves or stoles. They're all so colorful. And I only have a red one and a white one or a black one or whatever it was. So this was a couple of months ago before today. And there was plenty of time to do something about that. So uh, here it is your new teaching scarf and on behalf of oh, the two congregations you. I'd be grateful if you would put that yeah. on don't strangle yourself try not to <laughs> no that's it and the, the, co the cord goes up there yeah congratulations <laughs> happy birthday yeah. And now, as you do on baptismal Sundays, in order that folk can see it at closer quarters, <laughs> perhaps you, you could go round. What? <laughs> you can't deny two session clerks all at once. No, I can't. I can't. Really can't. Um, can I just before I do, thank you so much for this. Um, it's actually called God's, God's Promise. That's what it's actually called, and the colours all match, obviously, with the liturgical times of the seasons of the year. Um, uh, it's really quite fantastic, so thank you so much for this. Um, what would, am I just walking around? Are, you, oh, yes. are we doing anything or no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, should sing something. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, the, it's still not bad either. <laughs> I, I'll walk quickly this time, thank you. Hello, hello, goodbye. Hello, goodbye. Feel like this is the only exercise I get for the week, so I'm going to make the most of it. Hello. Thank you, hello. 
Good morning, how are we doing? Bye. Morning, morning, please. Morning, 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 how are you doing? Morning, morning, morning. Hi, morning, 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 morning. morning. Hello, guys. It's not bad, is it? It's quite colourful. Quite nice, isn't it? It's very colourful. It's very colourful. Extremely colourful. Do you want to try it on? No. Give it another go. No. <laughs> Maybe a big, big phone. Oh. <laughs> okay. I should say this will actually get its first outing on Tuesday as I'm conducting a presbytery service of linkage of Houston and Clell and, and Lang Bank churches at Lang Bank on Tuesday night with the presbytery of Clyde. So it will get its first um, outing on Tuesday night. It's going to explode. That's entirely up to you. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful that we can come here together Sunday after Sunday or in St. Ninian Sunday after Sunday and we come as a church family and it's right that when we, as we are a family that we celebrate these moments in our journeys in our time. And David, on behalf of the two Kirk sessions and the congregations, I would invite you to break into your parcel. It's with trepidation. I feel guilty. <clears throat> How do you open it? Well, have a go. Just rip it. What do you think? Just rip it. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> um, hang on. Okay. Oh. Oh. Uh -huh. Hope you're not going anywhere for a wee while. This is lovely. Thank you so much. What is this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is the thing. Ah. Oh my goodness, right, okay. Oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. Oh. I'm, I'm struggling here. Oh my goodness. While David's struggling to open this, <laughs> the, the members of the two cap sessions, I have to say, for the first time in my probably around 50 years' experience in church, congregational boards, and oh. cap sessions, there was 100% agreement for this. And I'm very grateful to the members of the Kirk Sessions who readily agreed to supply this for David. And it was impossible, it had to be a, it had to be a surprise. So therefore we couldn't just put sheets of paper out asking for contributions towards this. So it was done by the Kirk Session members. And they were sworn to secrecy for the, <laughs> the last six weeks or so. So, However, if within the members here or members of the congregation who are not elders, you have not yet had the opportunity to contribute towards David's hospice no. contribution, and you do wish to do so, then please feel free. The plates are at the sides and at the front doors if you wish to contribute something on the way out. <laughs> Didn't work. Do you know what it is yet? Sorry, carry on. <laughs> no snacking just yet. No, no, yes. Um, this is actually a power card. I'm extremely great. Um, are you going to, thank you, Jeanette. It, it's actually for the golf club. I'm not going to open it up because it's, I, would take too, I think it would take too much. I wanted but to see it. 
wanted to see you putting it up. Oh, that, that'd be... <laughs> No, no, that, that would lead probably to divorce proceedings. Um, actually, I've got it now, thank you. It's either to carry your golf clubs or your sermon notes. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Putting that back together then, what's taking out, just in case. Um, I've been extremely blessed since being here in St. May and OG and um, St. Indians. And um, Malcolm Keenan very kindly it gave me a power caddy after he'd, he'd given up golf and said he had to give up golf as well. And I'm so grateful to Malcolm for doing that. But this is, this is absolutely wonderful. This is just ridiculous. Thank you so much. It is um, an electric thing. You put your golf clubs on and it says you can. You may remember. Oh, yeah. There's a story. The first time I used Malcolm's, Malcolm very kindly gave me a loan of his the first time I went out in the golf course. And I pressed the wrong button. And Malcolm shot up the fairway. <laughs> And my golf clubs fell out the back, and I, Jim and I were chasing this thing over the golf course to try and get it back. Do you remember that? Yes, we did chase it. How could I forget? How could you forget? Um, and we had to put the whole thing together. So, um, it was, and I'm really grateful for, for Malcolm for, for the generosity he showed um, uh, to me um, when he had to give up because, of his, uh, because he was unable to play anymore. I'm really grateful for that. But this, this, is, this is just ridiculous. You shouldn't. It's just thank you so much. Thank you. I'm very humble. I, I really didn't expect this. I'm taken by surprise. Oh, Thank you. Oh, no. I'm not worth it. Thank you. It's our pleasure, David. And uh, it appears there's a cake. Yes. Now there's a cake. Where there's a cake, there's a way. So uh, it's nice. There's also a knife. Six days. Today. It's basically 60 the day plus five. <laughs> me you, me you enjoy in due course. <clears throat> I am I'm very humbly grateful. I, I don't feel worthy of it. I really don't. Um, you just age. That's what happens to you, isn't it? Um, I haven't yet applied for my bus pass. I will get around to it. But um, I'm extremely grateful. And I'm also blessed to be minister of two wonderful congregations. I've been blessed throughout my ministry. And old girl in St. Mary's in Dole when I was called in 1989. Those of you who were there last Sunday will have seen the photograph that my mum brought down. She brought down the ones on my birthday as well, one. <laughs> I'm not going to. But also one of me as I took up my call in St. Mary's and Old. I, we had a great and a half years there and just under 17 years in Hill House and here as well. It's just been absolutely brilliant. We shared that journey, but we're extremely, <laughs> I'm, what did I say? I don't know. I don't know. This is not good. This is going to come as a shock to you. I'm lost for words. <laughs> And that doesn't happen very often, <laughs> can I just say? But I'm really um, very humbly grateful. I, I do not deserve this. Um, I'm very grateful for all the donations that we'll make to the hospice. That is so worthwhile but, and grateful. But thank you, and thank you so much for this. this will, I'll put it to good use. <laughs> I'll think about you every time I take it into the rough to find another ball. <laughs> thank you. Thank you to you both. I could ask the first lady of our congregations to come forward, please. Shona. Oh, that's you. Why can't you tell me that's you, Shona? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are you finished? <laughs> 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 Nothing else, no. Nothing else sort of popping out. But, uh, pop. 
Thank you so much. Can we say thank you to Jeanette and Jim? Thank you so much. I'll open that later. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I just say one thing just before we move on? I mean, it's been a weird experience turning 60, it just the way things have happened and all that's going on. But one of the joys that has been for the last year or so is actually having Anne with us. Now, Anne's on, Anne came as a placement um, for, discer for, not for discernment, but for familiarisation to get used to the Church of Scotland. So you got caught up in a situation that's out with her control as the church changed and contracted and changed. She's been on an ongoing contract. That contract, hopefully, will be renewed for another few months after uh, the beginning of September. And then hopefully by that time, she will be looking and getting her own charge in due course. And we will say bye-bye to her uh, at the appropriate time. But I just wanted to say today, after sitting sharing in the service this morning, we are so blessed to have her here and what she's done and brought to our congregation and what she brings into the service. And I'm so grateful. She's a wonderful person and a fantastic minister in her own right. And we look forward to welcoming her. Wherever you end up as a minister, we can promise you there'll be a busload or two going from here. Okay? <laughs> Unless it's like Kilmarnock and you end up in Tromso in the Arctic Circle, then there's no way. But we will be there because we think a lot of you and we do want to say thank you. <laughs> and I'll get this out your way. Is this a serious thing, John? Is it a bulb? We have coming? a technical issue. What if we sing the song? And I think you'll, I think when I sing the first line of each verse, you'll remember how it goes. Hang on. Go for it. I'm not sure it's going to go forward. Here you go. Jump into the words. Yay! Can we say a huge well done to the technical team in the back? Great. So, can we have verse three, ladies? Verse four, men. Come on, men. We're counting on you. Man up. <laughs> verse three, ladies. Verse four, men. And everyone sings the choruses. We stand to sing. One, One more step along the world I go. One more step along the world I go. From the old things to the new. Keep me travelling along with you. And it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me travelling along with you. Round the corner of the world I turn More and more about the world I learn All the new things that I see You'll be looking at along with me And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me travelling along with you From the old I travel to the new Keep me travelling along with you Give me courage when the world is rough 
Keep me loving, though the world is tough. Sleep and sing in all I do. Keep me traveling along with you. And as from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. You are older than the world can be. You are younger than the life in me. Ever old and ever new. Keep me traveling along with you. And as from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. What a joyous uh, worship service today. Another happy birthday to David. It is a gift to work alongside him and with all of you. So, on that note, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And as you do, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and always. Amen. We'll sing now, we will walk with God. We will walk with God, my brothers, we will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters, we will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will walk with God, my brothers, we will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters, we will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come.